Welcome back to the shop, guys. So we got another week of S and S, and this week we've got some shaper work that I'm going to share with you. Got another one of those big sprockets that I've shown before in the past that I had set up over on the KT mill and used the horizontal cutter to split it in half. And we had another one of those sprockets to do, and I always enjoy bringing that home and playing with it on the weekend to um, to get it cut. And so this time I decided we're going to use the little Sheldon shaper down there to do that. So we've got that job done and uh, footage will be coming up very shortly on that. Okay. I've got one box down here of some viewer mail. We'll go over that real quick and uh, share what that viewer sent in. And I got a, a tool that another viewer had given me that I've got all cleaned up. I'm going to pull that over here and share, share with you what I've done with that really really nice stuff there and uh, it's a nice tool that I'm going to be able to put to use around here in the shop so as of right now I don't have any more updates on the shopping closure I'm waiting on some estimates from a couple different guys I uh, I'm still at this time I'm still waiting for an estimate for the first guy that I had mentioned and I'm in communication with a couple other guys but I just I haven't been able to like catch up with them yet they need to come by here and take a look at everything and get some measurements so that they can put some numbers together for me so all these guys are busy you know everybody's busy i guess everybody that's got a good reputation you know that's a reputable business uh, has plenty of work so it's not i don't think it's something that is going to get started on just immediately even though i really wish that it could but uh, i really do appreciate everybody's concerns you know with the with the project out there and noticing some things that didn't seem right or maybe it wasn't done right you know I know that this has been a very frustrating thing and and there's a there's a lot of you guys watching that have a lot of knowledge when it comes to construction because some of you that's that's the kind of work that you do you know so that is not my profession I could go out there and I could do that myself if I wanted to, but I've never been a carpenter, you know, I've never built anything quite to that extent before. So I, I could do it, but that doesn't mean that I, that I would be doing it correctly. You know, I, I could nail some stuff together and, and run some wire, you know, but I, I have a lot of guys that's asking, why don't you just do it yourself? But because I don't want to do it myself, I want to pay a professional to do it right, that I, that I know the job is supposed to get done right. And on top of that, you know, I want somebody to come in and get, get the job done and go. So that's the whole thing. I spend a lot of time working. I come out here and I work and it would take a lot of my time to have to do that project out there. So the way that I decided to go about that was to hire somebody and pay them for their service and have it done. Yes, I know that costs money, but that's what I'm going to pay. So that's the reason why, you know, I'm having somebody do it is because I want it done right and I don't have the time to do it. I, I want to pay somebody for their service. So working with some new guys here and I hope within the coming weeks that I have some more information on that. I hope I have somebody that's going to start doing some work. You know, uh, a couple of them even mentioned that it might have to be, you know, work a little bit here, work a little bit there just because they got other jobs going on. Uh, come over and try to get certain parts of it finished and then move on to the next you know the next phase so that's kind of where we're at on that but i'll let you guys know next week if we have any more updates to share with that project and i'll i'll be sure to let you know all right so let's go ahead and uh, show a couple little things right here and then we're going to go down to the shaper and we're going to we're going to do some shaping i wanted to share this interesting box of viewer mill uh, comes from a viewer, his name is Michael Murray, and he sent a, a wide assortment of different things, but the, the main thing that he sent that he, that he was talking about his letter is this stuff called no-ox. I'm sure that's uh, short for no oxidation, but there's several cans of it. Here's another big can of it right here, and he was talking about that he used to uh, work in, um, he says work on power, and they use this to coat power connectors but it can also be used for uh, any kind of bare metal surface, such as tools and machine surfaces, you know, uh, keep it from rusting. So it's, it's got the consistency of like petroleum jelly, 
uh, just that's what it feels like. And you know, he says, take it only takes a little bit, and you rub it all over the part, and uh, it keeps it from rusting. So he's got a bunch of that in there. So thank you for that. And there's a multimeter and just a whole assortment of like zip ties. There is a bunch of zip ties in here. A lot of these smaller colorful ones here and there's some clips. I'm not exactly sure what those are for. Those, those look like tags to identify stuff. There's some, those, these are cables like uh, ethernet type cables. A huge bag of zip ties there and a big, some big zip ties here. There's some electrical tape in there, some aluminum foil tape. And he's even got some uh, cutters. There's some different cutters in here. These look like long drill bits, but these are specialty. I'm not sure exactly what these are used for. So anyway, we got a few of these cutters right here. They could be used in a collet or a drill chuck, you know, if you need an extended length drill. So very cool. And one other thing that's in this red bag right here is a Starrett catalog, fourth edition catalog number 27. So very nice. I love looking through these these Starrett catalogs. They, I mean, just the the wide range of tooling that are in these old Starrett catalogs, even even the newer one, it's just great. But it's neat. It's neat having these books and actually reading them. And they have a lot of pictures to demonstrate how the tools are used. So that's another reason why these these books are great to have. They there's great pictures in there. So anyway, cool catalog right there. And uh, thank you, Michael, for the uh, nice assortment of uh, zip ties and the uh, no locks. I uh, appreciate it. All right. A few weeks back, I showed this multi-fix tool holder that was given to me by one of my viewers. I, I ran into him out there at the Bar Z Bash out in California when I was there. And I apologize, I cannot remember his name on uh, who this viewer was, but a uh, very nice guy, you know, loves the videos. And, and he come out there and he give me this multi-fix tool holder. And when he gave it to me, it was pretty cruddy. It was uh, just covered in grime. And so this was a little project that I did this week that I, I wanted to share. I wanted to go ahead and get it cleaned up and start using it. So uh, I was surprised at how clean this thing has come out. It's, it's like brand new. And to me, it looks like it's never been used. It just doesn't show any signs of wear on it. Uh, I think it could have been a, a new old stock item that was just sitting around. And I think the reason why it was so nasty looking was because it had like a, a, uh, a fluid film or uh, some kind of rust inhibitor that was dried up on it and it collected a lot of dust. So I soaked it in some solvent or the, uh, you know, the purple cleaner. I soaked it in that for a day and then I scrubbed it, took it all apart, scrubbed it real good. And that's how it come out. Now I did a little bit of rubbing here with some scotch bright just to kind of brighten up these edges. But that's, uh, you know, that's factory cut right up in there. So anyway, that turned out really nice. Excellent. I mean, really just an excellent condition. And it is a genuine multi-fix part right there. It's got made in Switzerland. And this is multi-fix type B is the size. Or mine, mine are stamped Enco because Enco sold them too. And uh, the Enco size is Enco E3. So that's what size that is right there. So... I just wanted to share that. Really happy to get that cleaned up and uh, start putting it to use around here. So I got another one of these sprockets here that you've seen me work on before if you follow on my channel. And if you haven't, this is a sprocket that I do at work. It's a job that comes in. It's uh, for one of the local utilities companies. And it's a sprocket that runs some piece of equipment out there. And it's a split sprocket. And the reason that it's split is that it's designed to bolt in place with the shaft and everything as a complete unit. They can unbolt this, take it off, and replace it. Uh, I, guess this, I guess the sprockets get worn because this is the third one that I've done. But it's uh, they the the first one that I did, they have kept as a sample. They haven't they haven't run it and used it. So every so the second time now they've come back. They brought the first one that I've done 
so that I can use kind of as a sample. And what I do is uh, just I set this up and bore the hole out, which I've got footage of that. And so we get the whole board out in the lathe, I drill the hole pattern, and then after all that's done, we split it. And I don't have a proper bandsaw to cut this. I don't want to flame cut it because that's just a, I, I'm not going to flame cut it good enough for it to look good. So the last two times that you see me do this, we've done it over on the KT mill using a horizontal milling cutter. And I decided this time, I was like, let's change it up and let's put a little time on the shaper and uh, have a little fun it's the weekend and i'm in no hurry so let's do it so i've already got the thing set up we've got four toe clamps holding it down i've got a line that's scribed on here right in the center of where i want to cut it and what i did before i raised this thing up was i took a square butt combination square and a 24 inch scale and using the back back here behind the uh, the knee I squared it up like this I set the uh, combination square against the back and then lined up my scribe line and bumped it around using a soft blow hammer just getting that line visually as close as I could from that end to this end right here if it's uh if it's off of a you know a half a degree or whatever it's not going to hurt anything because it's just a split sprocket but we want to get as close as we can. So I've got the thing squared up where I want it. We just got to line a tool bit up. So what we're going to do is I found this tool right here. I actually had that down there. And this piece of high speed tool will fit in the holder just like the one I've already got it in there. And that's the type of tool tip that we're going to use. So I've got to regrind this. I've actually got to make it a little bit longer because that thickness is 7 16 and we don't have enough length there. Plus I need to make it a little bit more narrow. So we're gonna make a, a 1 8 wide cut on there. So I gotta grind that narrow and further back and make sure that I've got adequate side clearance because we're gonna do a straight cut. We'll get this mounted straight up and down and as this thing is feeding, I'll, uh, I'll feed this down by hand right here. So we'll go ahead and play it through the motion and show you. Got the stroke set where it needs to be. And I'll have my hand up here and we'll, we'll just manually down feed that on every back stroke. We cut it across. So, uh, it'll be something new for me. I haven't done that before. This will be a new operation for me. So it's good to do something on the shaper and put it to use. So I need to go get this ground up and then we'll set up and start cutting. Make sure that I had it ground back far enough to clear. But we got plenty there. Yeah. All right, we got plenty of length there. I need to take a little bit more out right here because our we're just now clearing the thickness of the part, so I need to take this shoulder back further. Coarse wheel over here, so use your course to rough it in. This is the fine wheel on this side.
Okay, we hit our one eighth on our width there. I don't really like the the angle. It's the top of this been ground off, so I'm gonna put some back rake in the in this tool right there. It'll help help shear a chip a little a little bit free, a little more free cutting. I think we got the height of everything about where I want it and the tool stick out to where I think I think everything's going to clear. Actually, I better come down just a little bit more. I'm just worried about running out of clearance on this head. And we need to get it we need to get it squared up too. Just working on getting it centered. That looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and lock everything where we uh, where we got it. I reached down here to lock the niece knee support bracket and I noticed that it wasn't touching down here on the on the main part of the machine was it looks like I'm up about a half inch past that so I've already got everything where I want so I got one of my nice precision uh, parallels here and I'm just gonna I've got it wiped off I'm just gonna set it on this It's time to touch off and get going on this. Bring it down real close. a little bit, ain't it? Yep.
to be doing better when I feed it a little harder. 5 thousandths. If I just give it a couple thousands, it just wants to bounce off of it, really. second. Looking down the cut, everything looks pretty good. So on the dial up here, looks like whenever I move it five thousandths on the dial, we get a nice, a nice uh, heavy consistent cut. If I just try to dial like two thousandths right here, it seems to wants to just kind of bounce off there. And there's probably a couple things affecting that. Uh, maybe my tool isn't the perfect grind for this. And I've got a lot of tools stick out as well. It's kind of bouncing around. But I'm just doing the best I can here. But it looks like we're finally making it through there. breaking through there we go I was a little worried at first. I just didn't like the way that tool was doing, but this is the only shaper I've ever run. Is this uh, this is a 12 inch Sheldon, and it's a it's a nice shaper, but I definitely wish I had a big heavy one. I've, I've always wanted like a big Cincinnati, at least like a 24 inch or bigger, and I feel like one of those type of machines has the mass and the rigidity and the size that. that that you need to uh, take cuts and, and uh, really hog something out. This right here, whenever whenever it releases that chip, and not just this, but like other jobs I've done too, you can really feel that pressure letting off that tool whenever it releases. You can feel the whole thing just kind of jar a little bit, but uh, maybe that's how it's designed to operate. You know, maybe that's normal for a shaper, but every time I do a job, it's uh, just a little bit more learning experience on my part for uh, shaper work. All right, so let's reset, and uh, I need to clean this up, flip it around, line it up, and do it one more time.
Okay, I think we got her where we need it. What I'll do is just uh, lightly just hold it so that it's down and it's flat. And we'll use the combination square and scale. I've got it moved around so that I can get on the nicely machined area here of the knee, the knee ways. Keeping my finger and my thumb here, trying to keep the uh, square head square against the ways, and then just slide it up to that scribed line. It's looking pretty good. And if I look down on this end, it looks like it's in the center of the slot that I've already cut. Looks like it's right down the middle there. So I think we're we're going to be square right there. So this is obviously one of the uh, downfalls of doing a job like this on the shaper, but if I had one of those 24 inch or 30 inch or 36 inch Cincinnati's, you can do this all at one time. This is a, that's a 24 inch sprocket, but it's a little bit shallower there. I think a 24 inch Cincinnati would probably do this if I, you know, if I had one or anybody was doing this. So I posted a couple pictures of this over on Instagram uh, earlier whenever I was setting up. And it's, uh, I had a comment. Somebody commented and said, why not use the milling machine? Why not use the shaper? Tell me, why not use the shaper? So the first reason in my mind is we've already I've already done two of these and I've always showed them on my channel you know the splitting and uh, even the cutting the center hole out I've already used the K and T in the horizontal setup but I rarely show anything on the shaper and sometimes I get some jobs in here that would be good to use a shaper for and I just don't think about it I'm not I don't have a good habit of using this machine and it's not the fastest machine by no means but uh, everybody out there in YouTube land seems to really enjoy shaper work and I myself you know I I, uh, I like it and uh, matter of fact there's a channel that I just subscribed to here recently and uh, his name is Steve Summers so check him out he's got a 24 inch Cincinnati and he's been he's put up some shaper videos and uh, he's been very enjoyable to watch, so uh, make sure to check him out. I'm sure he's going to have a lot more coming. He's a very new, upcoming channel, and I'm sure he would really appreciate you going over and checking him out. So I'm just doing this to change it up and bring you some different content to the channel. And I have a lot of guys request videos of the Shaper, so that's why I'm doing it on the Shaper. It's Friday night, and uh, this is what I do. Um, just hanging out in the shop. Alrighty, round two. <clears throat> Let me double check everything. I just locked the knee and the knee, uh, the bracket over here, the support for the knee. All right, those two are tight. That's tight. And that's tight. I think we're ready to go. Oil. Try to keep the cuts going. Seems to be 
actually pretty good. can split a sprocket, huh? Actually, uh, before I take that off, let me go ahead and um, mark it. I need to stamp it uh, so that they're timed right whenever they go back together, but I'll at least mark it for now, and then I'll go over and stamp it. We got A and A, B and B. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go over to the to the uh, vise, and I'm gonna file those edges, get the sharp edges off of it. remove your sharp edges. I don't want to leave nothing there for somebody to cut their fingers and hands open on. I'm trying to dab up the cutting oil so it don't get all over the file. We got her done. Just another fun way to 
It's been a Friday evening and creating a little bit of video footage for SNS for you guys to enjoy and another way to get the job done. You know, we mention it all the time. There's, there's always different ways to accomplish something and it's fun for me to be able to show a different technique, something other than I've already shown before. And I've been wanting to use the shaper a little bit for something here and, and this job come up. So actually whenever I come in with this, I was planning on setting up the K&T to do this. And I was sitting here looking at it and it just came to me. I'm like, why don't I use the shaper? Even though you can't cut it all the way across, it's like, well, I can do half of it and flip around and do the other half, you know, so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed sharing it with you, and I'll see you next week for another project.